dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we're about to enter 2020, the end of the second decade of the 21st century. In secular circles, wishes of peace, health, and happiness will be exchanged around the planet. But for those of us who are attempting to live the Orthodox faith, it would be good to focus on the admonition of the 13th stanza or canon of the salutation service to the Virgin Mary. And I quote, Having beheld this strange birth given, let us now be estranged from the world by transporting our mind to heaven. During this time of grace, after the incarnation of our great God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, Heaven is accessible for every human soul, regardless of condition, place, or social status. Christianity is full of hope, the only hope of the hopeless. As one of the great contemporary spiritual fathers, the Metropolitan Athanasius of Limassol explains, and I quote some of his words. He says, as a father confessor, in the last 25 years, I have heard the confessions of thousands, if not myriads of people. Among these, I met some people with extreme levels of repentance. I must confess to you that after they left the confessional, I felt the need to bow down and venerate the place where their feet stood. People from all walks of life laden with horrible sins, unspeakable sins, but they also displayed and underwent an amazing level of transformation and repentance because in the depth of their heart, the image of Christ was never removed or erased. Sin may distort and pervert man's existence, but it can never totally destroy men because the struggle between God who wants to save men and Satan who seeks to destroy him goes on up until the moment of death. I am certain that our merciful and almighty God gives a lot more power to the penitent, much more than what's needed to neutralize the attacks of the evil one. That's why, if one is lost, he will be solely responsible for this. He will never be able to say to God on that day, You know, Lord, if you would have given me one more chance, I could have been saved. When man leaves this world, he will sense that God did and provided everything possible for his salvation. And God's everything is infinite. So there's not a chance in a trillion that if men, any man, desires his salvation, God would not grant him that one chance to be saved. Consequently, men will feel totally responsible for his perdition, and this is what makes the anguish of the unsaved soul unbearable after its departure from the body. Based on this, we must never lose hope for ourselves and our brothers and sisters. No matter what the present condition of a person may be, no matter how depraved and how full of sin he or she may be, no matter if he is corrupt up to his eyeballs, no matter how enslaved and perverted his human existence may be, no one can ever say to this person, you know, my brother, the way you are, the way you live, the path that you have chosen leaves no possibility for you to be saved. We can never say this to anyone on this planet, not even to ourselves. All of us at some point are confronted by our tragic, miserable fallenness. The thing that we hate, we often do. We decide to confront sin, to combat our fallen nature. And we come across this Chinese wall between our embedded sinful passions and God. And one may rightfully ask, how can I climb over this wall? How can I meet God? I have tried repeatedly. I can't make it over the top. I keep sliding back 
I continue to sin day after day, regardless of all the promises I make to God in my feeble prayers. My efforts seem fruitless. Nothing works. Here, my co-suffering brothers and sisters, we need to use this golden key to the door of our salvation. The Niptic fathers insist, never lose your courage, but continue to get up and continue to ask God to save you. Here, we need to be convinced that salvation is never the work of our efforts. But as David says, I will get over this wall by the help of my God. With the power of God, I will overcome the wall that isolates me from grace. Regardless how much Satan tries to convince us that we are hopeless, we cannot succeed, we cannot do without this or that vice. We are not progressing. Not only we are not progressing, but we are becoming worse by the day. Not only we are not freeing ourselves, but we are making the bonds of sin even stronger. This is exactly how Satan tries to push us into despair. During these dark moments, man needs to turn to himself and say, True, with my human strength, with my human condition, this may be impossible. But what is impossible with men, it's possible with God. When Christ told his disciples it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, the apostles were fear-struck and said, If this is truly how things are, then who can be saved? Christ then resolved their concern and said, True, man cannot be saved by himself. He cannot free himself from his passions, from the bondage of sin. This is impossible with men, but very possible with God. With this perspective, we set the foundation of our spiritual struggle, which begins with the epignosis, the realization of our sinful state, the realization that Christ is not in the center of our heart. Our heart is not free if we are vexed by pride, air against judgmentalism, greed, anger, hatred, lust. Once these insidious invaders steal our heart, then we are spiritually ill. Sin and sinful passions poison on the noose, the eye of the soul, and eventually enslave the heart. It is said that certain spiders use their venom to paralyze their prey caught in their webs. Likewise, sin acts like a venomous spider that slowly poisons our existence. Once our heart is enslaved and anesthetized, it no longer feels the pangs of the conscience. It accepts sin and perversion as a natural state. This is why we often see some of our brothers and sisters embrace destructive behaviors and destructive lifestyles. Speak to them all you want. You will be hitting a brick wall up until the moment that something cracks. Up until the moment a small crack develops on that petrified cover or surface of our sinful heart, and a ray of the grace of God enters our lethargic soul. The truth is, and we should never forget this great truth, that even the most callous criminal, the most horrible sinner, never loses the image of God in the depth of his heart. Years and a lifetime of sin can never deface this great treasure. Such beautiful words of consolation by His Eminence, the great teacher from Cyprus, Athanasius of Limassol. So according to our faith, our brothers and sisters in Christ, every man is created in God's image and is intrinsically good. Evil has no essence because everything created by God is good. Evil is simply the absence of light, and it takes a split second to flip that spiritual switch. A classic example of this is the thief on the cross. The grace of the crucified Lord cracked 
the rocky ground of his lifelong criminal heart. The light of Christ entered his heart and he made a public confession by condemning his previous actions and lifestyle, by rebuking the other robber. We are punished justly for we have received the due repayment of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And this criminal became the first citizen of paradise. Based on this most powerful action and example of Christ's love and forgiveness, no one can ever lose hope. We can never lose hope for any human being, let alone for our baptized children, siblings, relatives, or even ourselves. A lifelong criminal activity, a lifelong accumulation of the most heinous sins and evil deeds were instantly wiped out and washed in the ocean of Christ's love. This is our God, our only true treasure and boast, the boast of St. Paul and all the apostles, of all the holy ones and every righteous soul. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who only does wonders. A God of wonders indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thousands of our contemporary Orthodox Christians have witnessed the wonders of St. Porphyrios of Athens, St. Paisios of Mount Athos, and St. Iacobos of Evia, St. Anthimos of Hios, St. Nikiforos the Leper, and St. Nicholas Planas of Athens, St. Siloan the Athenite, St. Luke of Crimea, and St. Joseph the Hazycast. Here in North America, in the last 30 to 35 years, we witness the wonder of Elder Ephraim of Arizona, a wonder that was envisioned and prophesied by the patristic theologian Father John Ramanidis, the teacher of the now reposed Father George Metalinos. Father Metalinos published the personal correspondence of Father John Romanidis 17 years ago in 2003. On page 135, Father John writes exactly 61 years ago on December 27, 1958. America is ideal for Orthodox monasticism because the government does not intervene in ecclesiastical affairs. The Orthodox monastic life could truly blossom here in America, where sin abounds by the grace of God. Grace can abound in a superb way. A good and strict monastic practice is the only thing that can show us the way to help us exit the deplorable state of orthodoxy here in America. If this takes place from fathers of Mount Athos, we will have the rubrics, the typicon of Mount Athos, with all night vigils, 40-day liturgies, etc. These Athonite monastic communities will become powerful missionary centers which will invade the very center of the kingdom of Satan to cleanse the atmosphere from the demons by the daily use of the censer and the work of nipsis and prayer. Unfortunately, some of the frontline henchmen of Satan, the pseudo archimandrites and pseudo monks, are extremely opposed to the presence of genuine monastic life because it reveals their stench and their spiritual emptiness. This wonderful vision or aspiration of Father John Romanides materialized and came to fruition about 10 years before Father John's repose. Father John Romanides was born the same year as our elder Ephraim, in Piraeus, Greece, and repose in the Lord in 2001 in Athens. The prayer of St. Simeon, the God Receiver, would be very apropos for Father John back in November 1st, 2001, 
the day of his departure from this life. Now let thy servant depart in peace, for mine eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. We pray for a spiritually fruitful new year 2020 with the prayers and intercessions of Father John, Father George, and our saintly elder Ephraim of Arizona, who are now rejoicing in the unwaning light of paradise.